Hello, I'm Alex from Trainer Day, and today I'm going to show you kind of the very simplified version of how to use the Trainer Day training app and how it integrates with our website and how to do just very basic functions, right, to get you rolling. So you can see here I've got the app open, right? I'm holding it in my hand also. I've got the app open and this is for premium members. So this is the features. It, some of it relates to free users, but most of it's directly related to premium functionality. So the first thing we see here is the Today tab. And if you set up a training plan or if you are using our calendar, I'll show you our calendar here. If you're using our calendar, whatever you have scheduled for today, today's the 21st, whatever you have scheduled for today, will be the first thing that shows up from your calendar, right? So that's the first thing that you'll see on today. Whoops, I just lost my screen. Oh my gosh, okay. And you can sl slide this over. So you can see there's other recommended workouts that or other workouts that are just from our you know, massive workout library, our 40,000 public workouts, that it tries to pick some good workouts that it thinks are good for you based on your recent activity, either from Strava or from our app. Anyway, so that's the Today tab. You can click on Ride Now and Ride. You can refresh this button at the bottom and it will actually give you new, let's say, recommended workouts, right? It'll give you your 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 calendar workout will never change and your calendar workout is not filtered by the filter at the top but pressing refresh will give you new new workouts that are interesting right so next is our workouts tab at the top up here i'll use my mouse here the up up here these are lists that you can create to organize your workouts and that's ultimately best done inside of our training app. I mean, inside of our website. So in our website, if you come and you go to search workouts and you, this is already, these are already added. You can, you can, because these are red, that means you've already added them to a list. But if we want to add a new one, we can add it to favorites. We can add it to tests, whatever, whatever lists we have. And we can add it to a new list. So you can create a new list right from here. So if I add that to my favorites, now it's added. Now I, I'm on my favorites here. And when I hit refresh, this little button right up here, this little refresh, then you will see that new workout is there. Now you can see that this new workout that I just added is in my favorites. So you can do that from the app as well. It's just that the search functionality in the website currently is a lot better than the search functionality in the app. So you also can do that from here. So you can come and click on this little search button. Oops, I'm clicking with the wrong thing. I click on the little search button. Now I can type whatever I want or I can just hit search space button <laughs> to search everything. If you just want to browse everything, just hit the space button and hit search. So then it comes back with a whole list again. And if you click on that, you can then also, uh, okay, so you can click on that workout and down at the bottom, you can see you can also add it to a list here. So you can manage your lists and search workouts from inside here and add more to lists. And that just makes them really easy to access and quick to access across the top. Or you can just search and ride one. So once you have a workout that you like, okay, so when we, you know, when you're first starting out, for example, if you don't know your FTP, your functional threshold power, which means the amount of power that you can sustain for about 40 minutes, like the maximum amount, it's good to do a ramp test. So this first one is the ramp test and, uh, and you can just click right now and do your ramp test, right? And so when I click right now, you know, one of the things you see here is you, you have to go to devices and you have to connect your devices. So I have a test device here I can use and I will add that. 
And then you will see this test device automatically generates power and heart rate and RPM and stuff. And so you will see those, those values show up and you'll see it start to progress, right? So then you, in this F, in this ramp test, you get some messages and you can read them or follow them. Anyway, so then you're doing the workout and then in a, in a ramp test, when you get to your, to the end, right? When you can't pedal anymore, it will just kind of stop and it will tell you your estimated FTP. So, so that's a ramp test in general. We have these different modes. You can see HR plus ERG and slope. And uh, ERG is where your power is automatically controlled. So no matter what gear you're in on your bike um, or what cadence you're pedaling, the power is going to stay consistent. You know, so if you have too small a gear or too big a gear, sometimes there's some problems. But if you're like in a middle gear or any of the middle gears, generally it's just going to control your, the intensity of your pedaling. Slope mode is basically like a manual mode. So if I click on slope, or now I'm in a manual mode, and I can press plus minus, that will increase the slope. So that's like the slope on a hill. It will increase it and increase your intensity, but you also can increase your intensity by, you know, increasing your cadence and pedaling faster or changing your gears or, you know, to increase or decrease. You also can click on each of these little, you know, you can click on each of the little things and you can see that it, this changes the direction from going up to going down, right? And the same as with some of these other ones, you can change this one to average watts, right? And you can change this to percent of FTP. So you can change all these values and experiment with them. So that's the basics. So let me then we get into you know working with calendars and you know i've got my calendar here i can either add a training plan to my if i want to follow a training plan i can add a training plan our community plans are you know it's kind of hard to pick or find what you want if you're a little bit more experienced maybe you know what you want and you can find a good community plan but if you don't know what you're looking for, you're best off starting with Coach Jack, right? And Coach Jack will build you a plan. It'll ask you some questions, you know. It will build you a plan. And ultimately, there, there's some skip, steps that got st skipped here, but you should understand them. And ultimately, you get to here, and it's going to recommend a plan. And you can change that. You can change it from 8 weeks to 12 weeks to, you know, whatever you would like it to be. Um, and you can change the intensity. If, if you, it starts out too easy for you, you can increase the starting intensity. And we also have kind of this ride feel that you can make it harder. I recommend starting at level one for most people, even if you're an advanced athlete. If you're in the middle of a training period or block and you're at a peak intensity and you want to go higher, then moving this up definitely makes sense. But if you're kind of starting out or something, then or starting out your season or this block or whatever, then I, I recommend starting at level one. Some people just like higher intensity and, and they just don't want to do low intensity. So go ahead and increase it. Anyway, um, I'm not going to go into all of Co Coach Jack, but let's just say create a four-week plan and then ultimately save next and send it to your calendar and then it will be on your calendar. I'm not gonna explain my, my plans, that's kind of a little bit more of an advanced feature, but does add some great functionality that, that it creates a reusable plan that you can then send to your calendar or follow or it, it, it's, anyway, I'm not gonna explain it. So, so then once you've got a plan on your calendar, Right, you see it here, and today you'll have a workout scheduled, and you can delete that workout or add a you know click the plus button, add a new workout, um, and so on. You also can go to search, and you can say send to and send it to my calendar. So if you search and you wanna you wanna send it directly to your calendar, it'll send it right to today, and then once it's on today, you can you can move it around. Okay, so the other things are that are, you know are fairly important. It's 
may be easier to do it from the website, but you can also do some of this stuff from the app directly, which is connect to Strava so that it automatically posts your rides to Strava. Connect to Training Peaks. We've got some different features with Training Peaks. Um, connect to Garmin. So one thing with Garmin, you can read here that we can't sync completed activities to Garmin. So if you want to sync a completed activity, it's best to use RunGap or there's a few different solutions that will that you can you know send stuff to Strava and then yeah there's a there's an app that will automatically take it from Strava and send it to Garmin. There's there's a lot of different solutions, but they they won't let us or let any new smaller or basically anybody send stuff to uh, completed activities there anymore. And you've got all your different connections here. Okay, so back to the app. I'm gonna stop this workout, stop. I'm gonna discard it. If you discard a workout and you go to your activities and say you did that on accident or there's actually a delete functionality up here and you can just see the workout I just discarded but I don't see it. <laughs> okay, whatever. Okay, so then we've got our settings here. You know, sports cycling is going to be for 95% of our users most of the time. And cycling FTP will get automatically set from that ramp test if you did one or if you know it. You know, there's a lot of other options here. Um, I'm not really going to go into any of them. Is there any of them that are important? Show power zones. No, no, no. Show power zones shows you what zone you're in. Zone 1, zone 2, zone 3. That might be interesting for some people. Uh, most of this stuff doesn't really... That's the simplified version of, you know, using Trainer Day. Thank you very much.